Hi everyone, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. I've been saying recently that I need to clear the deck of all of these speckies I've got piled up. So today I'm going to try and boot up all five of these which were sold as seen on eBay. Now in order to keep track of them I'm going to have to give them names. So I decided that spectrum related names would make the most sense. With Horace, Willy, Dizzy, Eric and Burke. Let's get started straight away with Horace. Horace is in great shape, apart from this scratch on the left hand side. That's too bad, but it's not worth changing the faceplate for. It should be a 48k, and it arrived with all four feet and all of its screws. The keyboard membrane was attached, but I've already been into it, that's why it's not attached now. And it's a foray, which is great because the power circuit doesn't need modifying. Here's a list of everything we're going to check starting with a 7805 voltage regulator. I'll put a link in the description to a video that describes all of these checks. The guy who made that video is much smarter than me and explains it much better than I ever could. Anyway, the voltage regulator checked out, so right now I'm checking the ground, plus five, minus five, and plus 12 volt supplies to the lower RAM. And now flipping the board over to test the coil, basically checking for continuity where we should have continuity, and no continuity where we shouldn't have continuity. And everything checks out. Now, I want to power these up with the current limiting power supply, so I'm going to butcher this plug that I found that has the right size barrel jack on, so I can hook it up to my bench power supply and limit the current supplied. You might notice red and black are swapped. That's because this plug that I butchered was a center positive and the spectrum needs center negative. So I'm going to set the bench supply to 9 volts, and I'm going to set the current limit to about 1.3. On startup, the spectrum shouldn't draw over 1 amp, so this seems safe to prevent anything exploding if there is a short. And the current draw looks good, it's about 0.6 amps. Um, on the left here, I'm trying to connect a composite video just by holding it against the wire, but it doesn't seem to work for me, so I'm going to have to use the RF output. And it works, brilliant. No repairs to do there, just this list of jobs. I'm going to change all the capacitors, put a new keyboard membrane in, and do a composite mod. This is the nice thing about issue 4A mods. You don't need to do a DC-DC mod. So we're off to a good start. Horace is up and running and just needs a refurb. Next up we'll take a look at Dizzy. Dizzy also arrived looking in great shape. Minimal wear to the faceplate. In need of a clean, but that's about it. In this case we have an issue 3B board. Now between the 3 and the 3B there were some improvements to the power circuit, so there isn't so much to do in that area, although I think one capacitor might need to change. The 7805 checked out. The four supplies to the lower RAM, including the ground, also checked out on this one. And I did check the coil, I just forgot to film it. And here's the power draw, it's a little bit more than the previous pod, but it looks good. And it boots. The picture is a bit noisy, but I think new capacitors and a composite mod will help with that. Also, we might need to do that one capacitor change to the DC-DC circuit and a new membrane. So two out of five booted first time, not bad. Although I don't think this look's going to last. Next up, Eric. Eric's had some work in the past because it's got these stickers all over it. I actually had to rip one of them off to get to the screw, which was a bit of a shame, but I do need to get into it. The keyboard membrane was attached, but again I've been into this one already. And we can see that the 200 microfarad capacitors at the bottom have been changed. It's an issue 3, so I'm going to have to do the full DC-DC mod on this one. I'm doing the same checks. So the 7805 looks good, the RAM supplies also look good, and finally the coil also checked out. Checking the power draw, 0 0.54, 55, 57, something like that, not bad, and it does boot. So same mod supply, we'll have new capacitors, I'll put a new membrane in it, DC-DC mod, and a composite mod. So 3 out of 5, looking good. What about Burke? Let's take a look at Burke. Burke is in awesome condition. A little bit dirty, but there's no damage. 
and Burke is a 16k. I didn't expect that, but there you go. It's an issue too. So there's a DCTC mod, which I can see has already been done. This capacitor here shows that, although I will replace it. I am a little bit suspicious of the coil. It's got a purple wire on it, and it's not sitting flush. But if it works, then I'm not going to change that. Same check supply. The voltage regulator looked good. The RAM supplies also look good. And that dodgy looking coil actually is looking good. Power draw. I was surprised that this is actually above 0 0.6 amps because there's a lot fewer chips on it. But it's fine, it works. The image is blue, but that's okay, we can tune that. And we have actually got quite a big list of jobs for this one, including the usual new capacitors, new membrane, changing the DCDC mod capacitor, a composite video mod, tuning this blue image, and upgrading to 48k. Also, with the capacitors, I'm going to use high temperature rated capacitors for the two which are right next to the heatsink. Now, I can't decide if I'm happy or sad about this. I really wanted some interesting faults to look at, but I can't really complain having four working speckies which were sold untested as seen. Uh, the last in the pile, anyway, is Willy. Willy looks a bit rough, I'm not quite sure what's happened to the faceplate here. Um, it's hanging off and it's, it's kind of corroded. Let's have a look inside. He's also missing all of his feet. Okay, we have an issue 6A. There's no heat sink. That's not good. I'm going to have to put a new one in. The power draw is quite low. I guess that's because the issue 6A is a good design. Although it is fluctuating and I can hear the coil whine is rising and falling, so something doesn't seem right here. And yeah, I can confirm that does not look right. In fact, the changing coil wind pitch is in time with the flashing of the pixels. So I think we're going to have an interesting fault finding video out of this. And not bad overall. I'm quite happy that I got an issue 2, a 3, 3B, a 4A and a 6A out of the same pile. I was wondering about filming an oscilloscope while reading every pin in each of these different issues as a reference video for people to look at. Maybe comment below if you think that would be useful. Keep an eye out for the repair of Willy. That will be coming up pretty soon, I think, because I'm excited to get stuck into that. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.